The press resistant midfielder has become one of the most coveted player archetypes in European football. At the highest level of play, there is little time and space afforded in the middle third. It's meant that midfielders have to constantly display the ability to receive the ball in tight areas and make quick decisions. There isn't a high supply of midfielders who can do this, while also still being proficient out of possession. This has been reflected recently by Premier League clubs spending tons of money on midfielders who potentially can fulfill those demands. Arsenal spent $105 million to acquire Declan Rice last summer, while Chelsea spent over $220 million across 2023 to sign Enzo Fernandez and Moises Caicedo. It's a bit of a change from what we've normally seen, where attacking talents were the ones who'd go for eye-popping fees. In today's game, if you're a middle to upper tier club with a high-end midfielder of this mold, you're sitting pretty good right now. Benfica is one of those clubs, as they have a player in Joao Neves who's caught the eye of Europe's giants. He's an academy graduate who at only age 19 is already logging a ton of minutes for a Benfica side that's once again challenging for the league title and is in the final eight of the Europa League. His performances, especially given how young he is, has made him one of the prized targets of the upcoming summer transfer window. Nevis will certainly command a gigantic transfer fee. It's been reported that part of the new contract he signed last summer included a release clause at 120 million euros. That would have him firmly in the top 10 for most expensive transfers ever. His age does make such a fee easier to stomach compared to paying someone in their late 20s. However, it's still a ton of money no matter how you spin it. As such, it's a good time to discuss the kind of player Joao Neves is right now, what his ceiling might be, and whether he'd still be a worthwhile acquisition near or at his release clause. What Neves does out of possession is arguably the most exciting part of his skill set so far. So early into his career, he already has one of the best engines in football right now. In combination with being a high-end dueler, this allows him to make defensive plays in different areas. He's good at not going to ground recklessly for a challenge, and can time how he jabs at the ball with a standing tackle. There's a level of controlled chaos to how Nevis operates. He'll often use the touchline to provide help and double-team the ball carrier. Over short to medium distances, he can close down space quite quickly after a couple of strides. This is particularly true if the opponent has a bad first touch which will trigger him trying to create a defensive action. Neves also shows at least some ability to play a thinking man's game, which is what you want to see if he ends up playing as a 6 out of possession. He'll sometimes read the opponent's eyes while they're trying to make a pass, which makes it easier for him to generate blocks and interceptions further back. It's common to see Neves eliminate potential counterattacks by taking aggressive gambles in high positions. Among midfielders in the Primera Liga, he's in the 97th percentile for tackles in the final third according to FB Ref. If he thinks there's a chance at winning possession to keep the opposition boxed in, he's likely to take the chance. In today's game where the best teams stress control and territorial dominance, being able to win the ball back quickly helps in constantly applying pressure. The desire shown by Neves to regain possession can lead him to being dragged out of position on occasion, which as a 6 brings a few complications. In addition, having this type of defensive usage means you'll get burned off the dribble here and there. The end result is a midfielder with a huge defensive profile. Like with other sports, trying to quantify defensive value is very tough, and so this graph shouldn't be seen as the be all end all. But it does show us just how active Nevis is out of possession. A surprising part with Nevis is that despite being listed at 5'9, he's pretty good in the air. In domestic play, he's in the 85th percentile for aerial wins among midfielders, and 80th in percentage of aerials won. You'll see him occasionally win these duels against guys who are multiple inches taller than him, due to his impressive vertical and timing. When watching Nevis play, it's hard not to be reminded, at least a little bit, of N'Golo Kante. Kante was even shorter than Nevis at just under 5'7, but he was the poster child for the all-action central midfielder during the mid to late 2010s. There was maybe no better player in the game than him at delaying or eliminating potential counterattacks, in addition to having incredible ground coverage. He could also evade pressure with regularity in possession and was a quality passer. This led to universal praise from those in football, especially people who worked with him. I'm not saying that Nevis will for sure be as good as Picante, but there are at least a few similarities. There are potentially more questions with Nevis' skill set in possession rather than out of possession. 
Let's start with the positives. It is very tough to get the ball off of him. He's in the 92nd percentile in successful takeouts per 90 among midfielders in Portugal, 74th in carries into the final third, and 62nd in progressive carries. You'll see Neves utilize a quick change of pace over the first few yards which help him gain an edge, even in difficult scenarios. He's comfortable with switching feet in tight spaces and initiating quick combination plays. There are times where he might back himself too much to try and escape out of pressure rather than positioning himself to receive in space. I'm curious to see how his ability to receive on the turn will translate against stiffer competition. In terms of off-ball movement, Neves isn't prolific at that part of the game right now. He's not tasked with constantly making runs from deep into the box. He could be better at recognizing opportunities to move forward a few yards with his positioning, to receive as the free man and open up his passing. During build-up, Neves will often drop into the back line as a third center back or cover for one of the fullbacks. This is the opposite to how most of the top teams operate today, where they're pushing more of their technical players forward. Coaching and further maturity could help him have greater impact with his movement. As a passer, Nevis is more of a mixed bag right now. He shows a high level of comfort when recycling possession even while pressured. He's usually able to get the ball out of his feet quickly to keep sequences going, which includes attempting some passes between the lines. When facing forward and given time on the ball, he can pick out high value passes towards the final third. In general, I don't think he's currently the most expansive or daring passer during buildup. A similar critique can be said about the final third passing. Nevis isn't great yet at hitting off-ball runners against high lines. However, there will be the occasional moments where he makes the kind of passes you want to see from him, merging his dribbling skills along with good waiting on the pass. When Benfica create high turnovers, Nevis is more in his element in terms of forward passing since the reads are easier, which can lead to chances or secondary chances. There is a lot to like with Nevis' skill set. At such a young age, he's already shown tantalizing ability both in attack and defense to suggest a high floor. That's a strong level of resiliency which should translate towards stronger competition. To put it more blunt, it's harder to see Nevis failing. What's harder to figure out is just how high is his ceiling. The ceiling is the roof. Trying to project a young player's upside is never easy, but it's still a worthwhile exercise. The sporting intelligence consultancy called 21st Group has a player ratings model which uses a top-down approach to account for team strength. Since 2012, only three other defensive midfielders aged 19 or younger were rated higher than Neves. Warren Zaire Emery this season, Renato Sanchez in 2015-16, and Pierre-Emil Hoiber in 2013-14. It's important to note that Hoiber played less than 300 minutes that season with Bayern Munich. Meanwhile, Sanchez has had an up and down career since breaking onto the scene in 2016. Zaire Emery will be another interesting test case because he's even younger than Neves, has played a similar amount of minutes, and is on one of the top clubs in Europe right now. If we use a public metric like Davies, which goes back to the late 2010s, it also shows Neves in a positive light. I filtered for those classified as a deep midfielder or midfielder in general during the age 19 or younger season from the big 5 leagues as well as the Eredivisie and Primera Liga. Neves ended up tied for 6th at 0.06 per 90. Unsurprisingly, the top 2 are Pedri and Jude Bellingham from last season, with Bellingham outlapping the field to a considerable degree. Looking at the names from the top 10, and it's a pretty good list, Hossam Awar and Ibrahim Sangare are the biggest duds and they've still had decent careers to this point. These are notable indicators which might suggest Neves has the type of ceiling to where he ends up being one of the best midfielders in the world. Another thing in his favor is that he's a really young player who's getting regular minutes in a higher level league. In terms of league rankings, it's generally accepted that Primera Liga is somewhere between the 5th to 8th highest quality league in Europe. Coaches don't often put their faith in teenagers, let alone have them as a regular starter. Neves already having that type of responsibility in a competitive environment is a promising sign. Should clubs spend 120 million euros on Toronto Neves? Well, maybe. There is definitely a case to be made when taking into account how rare it is for someone his age to be a net positive contributor. With that said, there is also a notable risk in spending that amount of cash on a midfielder who at this point isn't getting a ton of goals and assists. It is realistic to think that he'll be one of the best midfielders in the world defensively, and that carries considerable value as either a 6 or an 8. If he ends up being in Golo Conte 2.0, the argument becomes a whole lot easier given the heights he reached. 
If Neves evolves into being a 6 full time, he'll be judged on his press resistance both as a passer and dribbler. As an 8, how good his final third passing gets to will be key. With how good he is already, and the potential to get much better, Joao Neves is one of the most interesting prospects in European football right now. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Here are some other videos I've done for the channel so far. I hope you all are doing well, and I'll catch you next time.